This third Sunday of Advent is called Gaudete, or Rejoice Sunday. We wear rose vestments today as a sign of the approaching joy of Christmas. A second shepherd has arrived in our nativity scene to prepare the way for the Lord's coming. He represents Moses, through whom God freed Israel from slavery in Egypt around 1250 B.C., Moses is important for Christians because the life of Moses prefigured the life of Jesus. That means his life was a symbolic preview of Christ and his mission. At the time of Moses' birth, he, like Jesus, under the reign of King Herod, was under sentence of death, for Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, had decreed that the male children of the Israelites be killed. The life of the baby Moses was saved by five women who quietly hindered Pharaoh's plans. Moses' mother, the two Hebrew midwives, his sister Miriam, and Pharaoh's own kind-hearted daughter who found Moses in a little basket in the reeds. Without the grace of God working in these women, there could have been no Moses and therefore no exodus for Israel. So also, without Mary, full of grace, there would be no God-made man, no Jesus Christ, to be our Savior and Redeemer. Jesus' cradle recalls the little ark or basket in which the infant Moses, and therefore Israel, was saved. St. Matthew tells us that the Holy Family fled to Egypt and then returned to the Holy Land when Herod was dead. St. Matthew then quotes the prophet Hosea that this was to fulfill what the Lord had, had spoken by the prophet, Out of Egypt have I called my son. The exile and return of the Holy Family retrace the pattern of Israel's exodus from Egypt. Let us think then about Moses and the exodus. At the first Passover in the time of Moses, The blood of the sacrificed Passover lamb was splashed upon the Israelites' doorposts. Seeing the lamb's blood, the angel of death passed over the Israelites and spared them. By the blood of the Passover lamb, Israel's life was saved. John the Baptist was referring to the Passover when he pointed to Jesus and said, Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. St. John's Gospel tells us that Christ himself hung upon the cross and poured out his precious blood, just as the Passover lambs were being slain in the temple. St. Paul wrote to the Corinthians that Christ, our Paschal Lamb, has been sacrificed. The precious blood of Jesus frees us from the power of Satan. Moses was the mediator between God and Israel when the law was given, and the covenant was sealed by sacrifice. Moses then declared, Behold the blood of the covenant, which the Lord has made with you, in accordance with all these words. These words should remind you of Jesus' words at the Last Supper, when our Lord changed the wine into his own blood of the new covenant. Moses stood in the breach before God when Israel sinned, pleading with the Lord to spare his people. In a similar but infinitely greater way, Christ is mankind's mediator with God, through whom comes the forgiveness of sins. The Lord Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Just as Moses the shepherd led Israel out of Pharaoh's slavery in Egypt, so Christ our Redeemer delivers us from the bondage of Satan and of sin and of death. Everything in the story of Moses and the Passover and the Exodus points to Christ and his saving mission. This is the biblical background for these words from the Penny Catechism. Our Savior suffered to atone for our sins and to purchase for us eternal life. Jesus Christ is called our Redeemer because his precious blood is the price by which we were ransomed. But why do we need the cross as the atoning sacrifice? Why is it not enough 
for man simply to repent and to mend his ways. We need the sacrifice of the cross because fallen man is too damaged to make adequate amends to God's justice and holiness or to restore human nature. John the Baptist, the great preacher of repentance, himself said, I have baptized you with water, but he, that is Jesus, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Only Jesus Christ can redeem and restore human nature itself. Mankind's penitent return to the Father's house is accomplished in Jesus Christ as our representative and mediator. Jesus' self-offering on the cross is of infinite value and so could make up for the sins of men. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, says St. Paul to the Corinthians. This is what is called the atonement. The word redemption is a key term for expressing this mystery. Redemption literally meant buying back or ransoming a captive or a slave. Redemption in Christ means liberation from the devil by breaking the hold of sin and guilt. That is why St. Paul writes to the Ephesians, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us. St. Peter wrote in his first epistle, You were ransomed, not with perishable things, such as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. Catholic doctrine also speaks of Christ's death on the cross as expiation and satisfaction. Those words mean making amends or reparation for sin. St. John writes that we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the expiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. By Christ's perfect satisfaction, God cancelled the bond which stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. St. Paul writes to the Romans, God shows his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God did not need to be persuaded by Jesus' death to be merciful. Rather, the mercy of God is incarnate in Christ and is fulfilled in the cross. Christ's entire life is an offering to the Father in which his death on the cross is the decisive breakthrough that atones for sin. As we sing in the old Christmas carol, Jesus' birth means Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Christ is born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth in his kingdom. The wood of the manger points us to the wood of the cross, for the Christ child was born to redeem us by his precious blood. The joy of Christmas is ultimately oriented toward the events of Holy Week. As the Apostle says to the Romans, We rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received our atonement.